Hi, Bright Lights. I want to come on today to talk to you about the holiday that is celebrated by many adults and their children, and that is Halloween. Now, I used to celebrate Halloween up until 2018. Then I started to realize that there was something demonic. It just had a feeling to it. Like it was something weird about dressing up in costumes of scary characters that got to me. Seeing kids going door to door, knocking on strangers' door. Where did that come from? Bobbing at, for apples in water. Where does that come from? Did it just come out of thin air? Watching scary movies during that time. That scares you literally and makes you have nightmares. Where does that come from? From churches celebrating as well. What is that about? These were just questions that I asked myself because something just seemed off. And I can say that's when my research of Halloween began. In 2018. I learned so much about this man-made holiday from the research that I got on Google. And that's when I stopped cold turkey. Because after consulting with God, because I have a relationship with God, I talk to God, I asked God specifically about Halloween. And getting the answer that is not of him, I stopped cold turkey. And then I started to do further research on YouTube and just looking at different articles. And I started to read and hear from former, former witches and warlocks who have now turned away from those practices, some of them. And the ones that became pastors for the kingdom of God, like Jenny Weaver and Richard Lorenzo Jr., they talked about the rituals that they did on Halloween, the sacrificing that was done among many witches and warlocks when they sacrificed humans. They snatched up kids. They sacrificed them for power. So let me get into the research that I found from Google. Halloween's origins date back to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. Samhain, and was celebrated by the Celts who lived 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years is when it started. November 1st was celebrated as the new year and marked the end of summer and the harvest and the beginning of the dark, cold winter with a time of year that was often associated with human death, Celts believe that on the night before the new year, the boundary between the worlds of the living and the dead became blurred, blurred, and that's called witchcraft. On the night of October 31st, they celebrated Samhain when it was believed that the ghost of the dead returned to earth. So in order to celebrate this or to give homage 
to the dead. They cause trouble and damage crops. Self thought that the presence of otherworldly spirits made it easier for the Druids or Celtic priests to make predictions about the future. To commemorate the event, Druids built huge sac sacred bonfires where the people gathered to burn crops and animals as sacrifices to the Celtic deities or gods. During the celebration, the Celts wore costumes. typically consisting of animal heads that they cut off and put it on top of their heads and attempted to tell each other's fortunes. By AD 43, the Roman Empire had conquered the majority of Celtic territory. In the course of 400 years, that they ruled the Celtic land, two festivals of Roman origin were combined with a traditional Celtic celebration of Samhain. The first was Ferella, a day in late October when the Romans traditionally commemorated the passing of the dead. The second was a day to honor Pomona, the Roman goddess of fruits and trees. The symbol of Pomona is the apple. And the incorporation of the celebration into Samhain probably explains the tradition of bobbing for apples. This is practiced today on Halloween. On May 13, AD 609, Pope Boniface IV dedicated the Pantheon in Rome in honor of all Christian martyrs. And the Catholic Feast of All Martyrs Day was established in the Western Church. Pope Gregory III later expanded the festival to include all saints as well as all martyrs and moved the observance from May 13th to November 1st. By the 9th century, the influence of Christianity had spread into Celtic lands when it gradually blended with and supplemented older Celtic rites. In AD 1000, the church made November 2nd All Souls Day, a day to honor the dead. It's widely believed today that the church was attempting to replace the Celtic festival of the dead with a related church-sanctioned holiday. All Souls Day was celebrated similarly to Samhain with big bonfires, parades, and dressing up in costumes as saints, angels, and devils. The All Saints Day celebration was also called All Hallows or All Hallow, Hallow Mass. And the night before it, the traditional night of Samhain in the Celtic religion began to be called all Hallows Eve, and eventually Halloween. Borrowing from European traditions, Americans began to dress up in costumes and go house to house. Asking for food or money, a practice that eventually became today's trick-or-treat. Young women believed that on Halloween they could divine the name of appearance or of their future husband by doing tricks with yarn, apple parings, or mirrors. In the late 1800s, there was a move in America to mold Halloween into a holiday more about community and neighborly get-togethers than about ghosts, pranks, and witchcraft. At the turn of the century, Halloween parties for both children and adults became the most common way to celebrate the day. Parties focused on games, foods of the season, and festive costumes. 
The American holiday tradition of trick or treating probably dates back to the early All Souls Day parades in England. During the festivities, poor citizens would beg for food and families would give them pastries called soul cakes in return for their promise to pray for the family's dead relatives. The distribution of soul cakes were encouraged by the church as a way to replace the ancient practice of leaving food and wine for roaming spirits. That sounds like people who worship their ancestors. The practice which was referred to as going a souling was eventually taken up by children who would visit the houses in their neighborhood and would be given owl food and money. On Halloween, when it was believed that ghosts came back to the earthly world, people thought they would encounter ghosts if they left their homes. To avoid being recognized by these ghosts, people would wear masks when they left their homes after dark so that the ghosts would mistake them for fellow spirits. The masks were on Halloween to keep ghosts away from their house. People would place bowls of food outside their home to appease the ghosts and prevent them from attempting to enter. And then, as we began to go forward, there were scary Halloween movies made. There were box office hits, such as the classic Halloween movies, which include the Halloween franchise. They came out in 1978. And those movies were scary with the pumpkin heads. And Michael Myers. This inspired other slasher films like Scream, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th. The Nightmare Before Christmas, Beetlejuice, Hocus Pocus, It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Even Charlie Brown had a scary Great Pumpkin show. And we wonder why kids will watch these shows or these movies and be scared to go to sleep or have nightmares. For nights at the end. So after researching all this, I asked God, I said, I said, why with all this technology and information, access to information that we have, why aren't people researching the origins of holidays? And you know what he told me? They delight in evil. I said, wow. I said, so do people really want to stop? Don't, do people really don't want to stop celebrating a day that they take pleasure in because they get to dress up and they get to dress their children in these outfits that, you know, that the industry makes to look cute. Is that why? They don't want to learn the history. Is that why they don't research the origins of holidays? Is that why they don't stop celebrating and participating in these ritualistic origins of dressing up in costumes, and dressing their kids in costumes and going door to door knocking on strangers door saying trick or treat.
Do they understand that by celebrating on this day, October 31st, that they're aligning with pagan rituals that were practiced thousands of years ago? A lot of people and even Christians today say, why are you going to ruin it for the kids? Why? Why are you going to? This is fun. Why are you going to try to damper our day? It's a, it's a day to have fun. It's a day for my kid to dress up. It's a day for me to dress up. It's a day to, for me to go to parties. It's a day for me to knock on doors. It's a day for my kids to get candy. That's, that's going to put a cavity in their teeth. That's going to cause them to feel sick because they ate so much of it. Of that candy that the witches and the warlocks went in their rituals over in the stores. That you bought those candies. Children are encouraged to dress up in costumes that they want to be. But I've heard witches and warlocks say, when Christians dress up their children as angels and fairies and cute little bears and rabbits, that is aligning with those pagan rituals. And it's giving that community of witches and warlocks and demonic worshipers is giving them power because you're aligning with them. Because of you dressing up as a character, as a superhero, with superheroes derived from Greek mythology, from goddess, goddess, and goddesses, from gods and goddesses. So when you dress up, in these costumes adults. And when you dress your children, parents, in these costumes that you deem cute as little bears and angels and fairies and mermaids, things that you're encouraging them to dress up in things that they want to be, you're aligning with those pagan rituals from thousands of years ago and you're giving power to a community that hates your God because you're participating on one day as a whole and that's giving them power because as you're dressing in these costumes, you, you're actually worshiping what you want to be and you're manifesting that in your life. And then I began to ask myself, as I began to look for churches that I would want to join, and I looked at what they did, I looked at what they said, I looked at what they said about Halloween. And I heard, they celebrate Halloween, huh? On church grounds? They have candy, they have rides, they have music. They have costumes, kids dressed in costumes. This reminds me of the pagan ritual on church grounds. It's, it's contradictory, isn't it? And I went before I stopped celebrating Halloween. I went to a church that celebrated. And I saw rides, I saw candy. I saw laughs, I saw giggles, I saw fun. And then I even heard secular music. Drop it like it's hot on church grounds. All types of music I heard. And I'm like, this is contradictory to God's word. And even up to recently going to a church that me and my family almost joined but i asked 
But actually, on the screen it said, we're going to celebrate Halloween. It's called Trunk or Treat. So I said, the only thing you changed was the treat to trunk. But it's still participating in the ritual. We couldn't join. It went against what the good book says, the Holy Bible says about worshiping and participating in rituals that pagans did. We couldn't join. And I asked the question to churches too. Why do you celebrate Halloween and as trunk or treat? And you know what they told me? They said they want to cater to people that are used to celebrating Halloween so that they can instead celebrate at a church. And I said, huh? So you're catering to the people now? You're catering to what the people like and what they want? You're catering to what they want instead of what God says? Why do you pick this day of all days to have this type of thing? To dress up in costumes, to have carnival rides. Why do you pick October 31st, the day that the witches, the warlocks, the demon worshippers celebrate, they sacrifice? Why do you pick that day? Is it to gain more members? More money? It feels like compromise to me. So my question to you is, are you celebrating Halloween this year? Are you going to dress your kids in costumes this year? Are you going to compromise this year? Or are you going to denounce Halloween? Because it ain't biblical. It's a pagan ritual. So the question is, as it's being recorded, what will you do on October 31st?